First news, Trump just BCH slapped welfare leeches with what he's making them do now for other people's money. The left stream media is once again having a hissy fit over what President Donald Trump's new proposed budget will do to the darling of the left. The welfare program, more specifically, the food stamp program. Although the media is saying the new proposed budget would cut the food stamp program by 30%, that's a lie. What the new budget actually does is require every able-bodied American who gets food stamps to actually have to work, at least part-time, in order to qualify for the program. According to the Department of Agriculture, last year, more than 44 million people received roughly $125 a month in SNAP benefits, which came to a total of about $66.6 billion. Sadly though, after former President Barack Hussein Obama came into office in 2009 the food stamp program increased by 14.7 million individuals. This is a disgrace in the richest and most powerful nation ever known to man, but it was all part of the far left's plan to control us. What's worse is the requirements for SNAP. A family of four take-home pay cannot surpass $2,025 a month, and a two-person household can earn no more than $1,335. How are these families making so little? I am sure bad decisions and poor education levels come into play here. Are people really this poor in the United States? Hard times can come to anyone at any time, that's a fact of life. But let's be honest with ourselves. We all know of cases where able-bodied adults make a career of living off the already overburdened American taxpayer. Most even live more lavish lives than those of us who actually work our hind ends off to make a living each and every day. The Sharon Herald reports, who uses SNAP, and where are they shopping? SNAP households are already on extremely tight budgets. To qualify, a family of four's take-home pay can be no more than $2,025 a month, while a two-person household can earn no more than $1,335. More than 260,000 locations were authorized to accept SNAP credits last year. Superstores such as Walmart and Target got 52% of redemptions, supermarkets like Kroger got 30%, and convenience stores got about 6%, according to the USDA. The rest was split among other kinds of stores. The USDA doesn't specify how much is spent at specific retailers. But in 2013, Walmart Stores Incorporated told the Wall Street Journal that it gets about 18% of total SNAP benefits. That would have been about $13.43 billion in 2012. What changes for retailers? Trump's proposal suggests that retailers pay a fee for authorization to accept food stamps. Companies currently don't pay to participate, which the proposal says fails to recognize the significant portion of a retailer's revenue that SNAP can represent. The proposed budget estimates the fees would raise about $2.4 billion over 10 years. It doesn't spell out how the fee would be calculated. Imposing a fee could result in smaller stores or chains deciding not to seek authorization, said Craig Gunderson, a professor of agricultural economics at the University of Illinois who has received grants from the agency that administers the food stamp program. That would reduce the number of places where people who use SNAP could get groceries. The National Grocers Association said the fee proposal raised a red flag. It otherwise declined to comment on how its members might be affected by the proposed changes, but said the SNAP program plays an important role in providing a safety net to those in need. How do SNAP cuts affect the larger economy? The government's overall SNAP spending declines when the economy improves and fewer people rely on the program. It's a situation that is the best possible outcome, said Stacey Dean. Vice President of Food Assistance Policy at the Liberal Leaning Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. Dean said cutting benefits when people's financial situations are not improving could mean they use money they otherwise would have spent on needs like clothing or even medicine to make up for the gaps in their food budget. So there's still an impact to the overall economy, she said. Putting off other purchases could affect other departments at superstores or separate retailers. A report by the USDA in 2010 also said that boosting SNAP benefits during economic downturns starts a multiplier process in transactions and consumption. It found that boosting SNAP expenditures by $1 billion was estimated to increase economic activity by $1.79 billion. Trump's proposal could have more significant effects than the rollbacks in 2013 and last year, said Gunderson. 
He said shifting costs partially to states would be unprecedented and likely lead to cutbacks. Here's a note to corporations who rely on us hardworking taxpayers to fund their business. You need to find a new business model because the current pyramid scheme you guys are running can't go on indefinitely. If you don't believe me just come over here to California and see how much we pay on gas taxes alone. Because you know, someone has to pay for illegal alien benefits and for the irresponsible actions of others who think it's okay to steal from the American taxpayer. This mentality will have to change if we are ever going to be Ronald Reagan's shining city on a hill once again. Please share if you agree the SNAP system need major overhauling. Second news. While Obama is following Trump around on overseas trip he missed what just happened at his house. President Trump's first overseas trip has been wildly successfully, and his popularity is only growing. That has, of course, ticked off the former malignant narcissist and chief, Barack Hussein Obama. Obama has been used to the constant adoration from his liberal moonbats and now the attention has shifted to President Trump. Instead of Obama moving on and letting his successor lead America successfully, he has turned into a jilted lover. Obama has decided to follow Trump overseas in an attempt to get the attention back onto himself. In a modern day where is Waldo, Obama appeared in Germany to lecture the German people about democracy. But, that is not all folks. Obama also went on pontificate that we live in a world that does not need walls. Yep, I am not joking about that either. Here watch this great clip. Here is more from The Guardian. Barack Obama received a hero's welcome when he reunited with Angela Merkel for the first time since leaving office, calling on the audience to engage in democracy and telling the tens of thousands in Berlin, we can't hide behind a wall. Speaking in front of the Brandenburg Gate, which was once cut off by the Berlin Wall, the former U.S. president was greeted with cries of Barack, Barack as he urged the 70,000-strong crowd to push back against those trends that would violate human rights or suppress democracy or restrict individual freedoms and to fight against those who divide us. He said he was heartbroken by the suicide bombing in Manchester on Monday, which killed 22 people. Calling the world a very complicated place, he said, we can see the terrible violence that took place just recently in Manchester. It is a reminder that there is a great danger of terrorism and people who would do great harm to others just because they're different. How heartbroken we are by the loss of life, and we grieve with the families. Obama called Merkel one of my favorite partners throughout my presidency. He said she had done tremendous work and he staunchly defended her refugee policy, which has come in for much criticism. In an angry confrontation with the chair of the Protestant Church in Germany, Bishop Heinrich Bedfordstrom, Merkel was asked why many refugees who arrived in the influx of about 900,000 in 2015 were now being sent home. Well, that seems rather hypocritical if you ask me. You see, while Obama was giving this flowery speech about tolerance he forgot about his little pet project at his home. It seems that Obama is nearing completion on his own wall at his house. But, it is not only Obama's D.C. abode that has walls. Apparently, Obama's humble dwelling in Chicago has barriers all around it which still have not come down. DNA Info reported in February, leaders at Cam Isaiah Israel, the synagogue across the street from Barack Obama's Chicago home, say the heavily secured block in Kenwood should be reopened to the public. Interim Executive Director Deborah Hammond said Monday the synagogue at 1100 East Hyde Park Boulevard wants the gates and barricades that block Greenwood Avenue at Hyde Park Boulevard removed to send a message of openness and exclusivity. If we could have it the way we wanted it, it would be open at Hyde Park Boulevard, Hammond told DN Info. We want to be more of a place of sanctuary. Maybe, Obama should have said in his speech that the walls were for others and not him, right? Well, what can you expect from an hypocritical liberal? Now, of course, I understand that former presidents need protection, but that is not what this is about. Barack Obama has told the American people for years, that we do not deserve to be protected, and we don't need walls. That we need to coexist and be tolerant of others, even if they want to kill us. I look at it this way, if Obama is so keen on walls to protect his family, we have the same right. I am sick and tired of these liberal nut jobs telling us how to live but have their own set of different standards. Share if you are sick of Barack Obama's hypocrisy.
Please do not forget to subscribe and like and comment because we want to hear your voice and thank you for watching.